Welcome back, everybody. You know, uh, just a year ago, my next guest was living an active life, hiking, playing volleyball, running, and working out all the time. That is, until at 28 years old, she was diagnosed with lung cancer. She's now a survivor and credits one woman who she wants to thank in a big way. Please welcome Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi. Welcome to the show. What went through your mind when you first were diagnosed? Well, I, you know, being so young and active, it, I felt like kind of the last person in the world that could ever get something like lung cancer. Mm -hmm. So it was obviously terrifying, but it was also a very confusing time. I think that, you know, we were kind of lost. We didn't really know where to go. We didn't really know what to do. How severe was the diagnosis? I was actually just diagnosed at stage four, which is the most severe stage, um, which means that the cancer has spread somewhere outside of your lung. And in my case, it was outside um, my right lung into my pleural lining around the lung. Uh -huh. Were you a smoker? I was a non-smoker, former college athlete, healthy person. Stage four, that's, that's pretty serious. It is. You know, only about 15% of people who get diagnosed at stage four are surviving. So I do know that I'm fortunate to be here, but it's been a long, tough road. Mm -hmm. You had a big supporter in this battle. Who was that? I did. Her name's Bonnie J. Adario. She um, is a wonderful woman who heads the Bonnie J. Adario Lung Cancer Foundation. She was kind of a champion the whole way. Her foundation was able to get us on the right path towards the correct treatments and all the genetic testing that I needed to do at a time when we were just so confused and unable to kind of do that research for ourselves. The foundation swooped in and helped us. And then Bonnie personally was just you know, kind of my own personal hero. She treated me like family from day one. Mm -hmm. And she really kind of enveloped me in her love and gave me a lot of strength and hope that, you know, I really needed at a time when it was mm -hmm. very difficult to have hope. How are you doing today? Um, I'm doing really well. I'm not going to lie. It's been kind of a rough road. I mean, I went through seven months of chemotherapy. Um, I had, thankfully enough, um, shrinkage of the tumor in my right lung, mm. that I was able to become a candidate for surgery. Um, I had my entire right lung removed, um, as well as the lining, which was also infected. Mm -hmm. And then right as I was recovering from that, about a month later, we started 28 rounds of high-dose radiation. So it was an intense couple of mm. months. Um, but today, you know, I'm happy to say that I'm... NED, which is no evidence of disease, so. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, listen, um, Bonnie is backstage, and she thinks that she's here just to tell us about her remarkable foundation. Uh, she has no idea that Emily is here to thank her. So we're gonna share that special moment when we come back, so don't go away. Well, folks, you know, there are a few things more terrifying than hearing that you have cancer. You know, nine years ago, my next guest beat incredible odds to survive lung cancer, and she's now on a mission to help other lung cancer patients cope. Take a look. I'm a nine-year lung cancer survivor and really lucky to be alive today because the survival rate for lung cancer is only 15%. I was at a point in my life where I was extremely busy, probably busier than I had ever been. I was president of two companies and raising three kids. I had several grandkids by that time. I don't think I ever considered sick or having cancer as ever being part of my life. It started with a sharp pain going across my chest I knew something wasn't right. I ended up getting a full body scan and the doctor told me that I had a tumor on my aorta and encroaching on my heart. The surgeon told me, if you do nothing, you will be gone in three weeks. I didn't know until he said it that way that my life was being threatened. Cancer invaded my life. I had chemotherapy every Friday. I had radiation Monday through Friday for almost three months. One thing I realized during this process, there isn't a lot of support for lung cancer patients. Many people believe that lung cancer only affects smokers. That is clearly a myth. So I thought, if I make it through this whole nightmare, I'm gonna do something. 
in 2006, we set up the Bonnie J. Adario Lung Cancer Foundation. Our goal is to raise awareness for everyone to know exactly what lung cancer is, what causes it, and what they need to do. In the first year alone that we started the foundation, we raised $800,000. I'm here, and I started this to give lung cancer patients a break. I think I survived to do this. Well, please welcome Bonnie Adario. <laughs> well, Bonnie, glad. real glad you're here. Well, so thank you. You're, you're in remission now? I am. You know, they measure survival for lung cancer after five years. So I'm a nine year lung cancer survivor. So I'm four years in. <laughs> Why is it important for you to get the word out? It's important for me to get the word out because worldwide, we lose 1.4 million people annually to lung cancer. 450 people a day. You don't have to smoke to have lung cancer. It's a myth. And somewhere along the way, lung cancer got singled out and became a disease that was only associated with smoking. We have little funding for lung cancer, so it's important to me to do this for those 1.4 million people every year. Yes. <laughs> Bonnie, your work has changed uh, so many lives. There's one survivor here who wants to thank you in a big way. Uh-oh. Please welcome Emily. Oh, God. <laughs> Bonnie, what her work has meant to you. <laughs> Having you on our team from day one and bringing me all of the knowledge that comes behind your foundation was incredible. But I'm not sure if you'll ever fully understand how much I just hung on every one of your words of encouragement and how much it meant to me that you reached out to me as just little old me, you know, lung cancer patient number whatever. And you made me feel like, you know, I was loved and accepted into a community that was willing and able to take care of me. And I just want to thank you so much because you really made a difference in my journey. And I appreciate that. So. Bonnie, you've given so much in your fight against lung cancer, but there's still a lot more to be done. That's why... The online coupon site, RetailMeNot.com, is giving the Bonnie J. Adario Lung Cancer Foundation $10,000. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for doing what you do. I want to thank Bonnie and Emily, and we wish you continued health and happiness. God bless both of you. You're truly a blessing. We'll be right back, folks.